Hey folks, Dan Furrow here with your market update for September 11th, 2024. So mortgage rates eased a little bit more yesterday, but the news right now is right through here. The Federal Reserve's meeting in seven days. What are they going to do? Are they going to cut rates 25 basis points? Or are they going to cut rates 50 basis points? We were hoping for really good economic news to this morning on the consumer inflation. So let's get over to the New York uh, Stock Exchange and Rick Santelli, give us the news, buddy, and hopefully inflation continues to come down. That's what we're waiting for. Bring it to us, Rick. Welcome back to Squawk Box. Rick Santelli here live at CME HQ with the important breaking news of the morning. Our August read on Consumer Price Index, the last look at this series of data points going into next week's obvious big FOMC meeting. CPI month over month headline up two tenths exactly as expected. Up three tenths when you strip out food and energy. That's a tenth hotter than we were expecting. And that equals April. To find a higher, you have to go to uh, March when it was up four tenths. If you look at the year over year numbers in the rear view mirror, 2.9, 2.9. That now becomes 2.5. 2.5 is the smallest amount going back to February of 2021. And if you look at year over year X, food and energy, 3.2, exactly as expected and exactly the same as the rear view mirror. And uh, what we want to definitely pay very, very close attention to here are the indices. CPI index going all the way back to 1913 actually moved down just a smidge from 3.1454 to 3.1479. That's higher, Ooh. but it's lower than expectations. And once again, that is the highest level since 1913. And if you look at the core indice, which only goes back to 1957, it also uh, came in uh, more than expected and more than our last look at 319.76. It has never been higher. We see that yields are moving up. And my guess is, if you look at expectations, we could see that there was one outlier there, and that was the core month or month, the tenth hotter. If you look at the sequential aspects of this, of course, uh, we see that the 2.5 year over year headline dropped four tenths. But once again, we could talk about all the significant progress we've made on inflation, but it's still not at 2%. Will it ever be at 2%? Does it matter? Well, it mattered when it was at 1.8, and the Fed wouldn't look at that as just steady pricing. It was below the target. We'll have to see how it all works out. We do see that the closes yesterday and twos were significant. That was a two-year low-yield close. In tens, it was a 15 and a half month low yield close and everybody's talking about the debate i was a bit disappointed having kids and grandkids who can't afford houses and of course can't afford insurance once you buy them or some of the other prices it seemed like there was really an economic tone deaf panel with respect to drilling down if you give people fifty thousand dollars to buy their house i think it sounds like a good idea but hmm i think cpi numbers might reflect that price of homes might go up about what $50,000? Squawk box. Well, here we are, Joe. Back to you. <laughs> a little bit of sarcasm at the end. What he, what he keeps saying is you can't just keep throwing money at, at things kind of like this, the national debt. Look how fast this money is being spent. This is how much money we don't have as a country that's basically getting put on the, the national credit cards, $35 trillion. So that's what he's looking at right there. So let's go over the numbers uh, that we have so far today. The CPI, w w he was going over month over month. So l let's break these numbers down so they make sense to you because there's, there's a whole bunch of numbers here and you're like, what is all this stuff? So let's go over here. First thing, the CPI is consumer inflation. Just think of it as that, okay? Core come when they when they put in core in the front of that. What that does is they, they'll always talk about they, they're stripping out food and energy. So what do they do? Well, the, the CPI is basically a baskets of goods and services that the Federal Reserve or the federal government monitors to see what the price uh, fluctuation of those basket of goods did. Okay, so month over month, they take this basket, let's say from last month to this month. What was this change month over month? And then the same thing from year over year. But in that basket, what they'll do on the core section of it, they'll pull out food and energy. Okay, right now, the number came in a little bit hotter than expected. 
But we remember, we have oil down to like in the $60 a barrel. It's ticking up a little bit more, but that's going to actually take a little bit of a bite out of that as well. So I'm okay with the, the 0.1 up in the core inflation um, because of this information. Then the next thing is we have CPI MOM. That means month over month. That's not the core. Again, the core stripped out that food and energy. CPI just normal is just with, with the food and energy in there. You can see these numbers go. Let me get my head out of the way so you guys can see all the numbers. So let's go through here. The core came in, it was re last reading was 0.2, expected to come in at 0.2, it came in at 0.3. Okay, so that's where it's like, okay, that's, mm, that's not in a good direction where we're going. Then we go month over month, just the regular CPI went from 0.2 to 0.2. Okay, we like it. Then we have CPI year over year, went from 2.9 to 2.5. How good is that? Well, if you scroll down through here, it gives you the history of this. We've never been in the twos for at least a year, year and a half, or maybe even longer. So that's fantastic news when it comes to uh, that information. Okay, so that's what we have so far there. Let's get over to see where mortgage rates are. Mortgage rates, there they are right through here. These are the top six products people use when they're buying their first house. So what I want you to understand is what creates this rate? What is this rate? Because you, if you go to 10 different websites and put in what's the mortgage rates, you're going to get different mortgage rates. Okay, so what consists of this? Okay, uh, let me explain this to you real quick. Okay, these people, what happens is Mortgage News Daily, they sent out a survey to a whole bunch of lenders and they said, if you had a borrower with this, these, these, this criteria right through here, and this is important, they're buying their first house, it's a single family home, and it's gonna be their primary residency. Okay, those three things. The other two things are right through here. How much money they're gonna put down and where their credit scores are. Well, that's right through here. They're putting down 25% because they're getting a loan for 75% and they have a 780 credit score. Okay, so if that's you, well, most likely that's your rate. If that's not you, I need you to go to the rateupdate.com, but hold on a second. We're going to finish the, the video right now. So let's get over to the CME FedWatch tool because we know the Federal Reserve's meeting next week at this time. They're going to do what? Well, let's scroll down and see what the ex expectations are that they're going to do now with the inflationary numbers that came out. So let's get my head again once out of the way. So now we have an 85% chance, 85% chance that they're going to cut rates by a quarter. That's it. So I think basically a half of basis points or 50 basis points cut in the federal funds rate is going to be off the table at this time at this meeting. But now they're saying right through here, there's a really good chance, 74% uh, chance there they will cut 50 basis points at the November meeting. So that's what we have so far there. Let's look at the, what, the, what the broad markets are coming out with. So the breaking news right through here is CPI hits more than a three-year low. That's fantastic news there. And then we go to the stock market. And the stocks are getting clobbered right now. We have the Dow Jones down 600 points. We have the S&P down 73 points. We have the NASDAQ down 148 points. Russell 2000 down. The VIX is going up a little bit, meaning the anxiety on Wall Street's ticking up a little bit. To go, go to cryptocurrencies, I can almost assure you they're down as well. Yep, cryptocurrencies are down $2,000 and oil's up ticking. Oil, ooh, oil's up ticking just a little bit. But we're only at $66 a barrel. That's historically on the low end of the equation. So good news uh, right now on that front. Let's get over to see what the bond market's doing right now. The bond market, you look at this. When the, when the news came out this morning on the CPI, the uh, MBS market dropped 20, about 20 to 25 points. And I'm like, oh, geez, that's going to be at least 0.1 increase in rates that we're seeing right through here. But what happened is complete reversal. Now we are up three ticks because the news, I took the news as not really being as bad as kind of the headlines made it seem. So that's what's going on so far, folks. A uh, deeper look into the economic news. Basically, all we're really concerned with is about the, the inflationary numbers on the consumer side of the equation. So tomorrow what's coming out is the CPI, or I'm sorry, the PPI. Let's go down through here. Here, what news is coming out tomorrow? We have initial jobless claims. This is from the federal government, not ADP this time. So that's going to be in in, the, in our headline or headlights. And then the PPI, producer inflation. Let's see where this is going because this is coming down along with these numbers actually coming down the way I look at it, it might be a good market uh, Thursday and Friday. So that's what we're looking for so far there. And then we have, again, the Dow Jones is getting clobbered right now. So we do have a live event this afternoon, Kyle Seagraves and myself. If you're out there looking to answer, get any questions answered to your home buying equations, like are you buying your first house and really don't know what to do? Are you buying an investment property and kind of don't know how it all works? Maybe you're trying to get the equity out of your current home to do something with it. These are all things we can help you with. So go to the rateupdate.com and you'll find all the information you need about me. But if you're looking to buy that first house, what I need you to do is 
check the grant finder. We have more and more people calling in every day saying, hey, we want to get pre-approved for a house. I'm like, did you qualify for the grant finder? Any grants? They're like, no, I didn't even look. You got to look, folks. It's right through there. Check and see. It's, it's basically free money. Kind of like Rick Santelli said, you know, if you give somebody $50,000, what's going to have to buy a house? What's going to happen to home prices? They're going to go up. So these grant programs, they're not offering you 50 grand. Most of these are about four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 just to help you with those closing costs. So that's what you can check out on our website right through here. If you want to find out anything more about me or, or my team, just click anything above or just Google Dan Frio. But if you're out there and you're like, Dan, how do I apply? Well, you can do two things. One, you can put in the application right through there, or you can give us a call. So you can scroll down right to the bottom of the website right through here, and there's our 800 number right through there, 844-775-5626. And if you want to reach me personally, just shoot me an email at dan at therateupdate.com. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Again, me and Kyle will be back today live at 2.30 Central Time to answer any questions that you guys have when it comes to real estate. So thanks for watching. I'll see you at 2.30 and then once again at the closing bell. Take care. Have a fantastic day, folks. Bye-bye.